Hi everyone, welcome back to my channel. Iki Tamanyari has asked me to edit a photo which has been taken underwater. So I'm going to show you how to fix the white balance. But before we start, my name is Rico Richardson. I upload weekly videos on Darktable and DaVinci. So if that's something that you're into, consider subscribing. Now let's go. And here's the image that he's sent me. And I'm going to show you a before and after. First, I've already taken a snapshot of the latest step. And here's the original. And if I move this slider to the right, there you go. So this is going to be the end result. And as you see, we're going to fix the blues and we're going to correct the white balance in this image. And I've got a special technique for that. So before we start, let me deselect the snapshot, select the final step, and I'm going to the duplicate manager and I'm going to duplicate the image. And that means that we've got a second image. And now what I'm going to do is I'm going to the orientation step and I'm going to compress the history. And now the fun part begins because I'm going to show you a special technique to fix this white balance. I've made a video about this before, but now we're going to see it in practice. So first let's do something about the lens correction there we go and after the lens correction we're going to use the crop and rotate module i'm going to select freehand and i'm just going to move this inwards a little bit so we don't have this fisheye effect let me just change the composition a little bit there we go double click it and here is the image that we're going to work with now first what i want to address is the noise in the image so i'm going to denoise it I'm going to activate it. It found a match for ISO to 50 so that the image has less noise. And I want to sharpen that again by using the high pass module. And I'm going to increase the sharpness, but I'm going to decrease the contrast a little bit. And the reason why I'm going to do that is because I don't want it to look artificial. And we're going to use this button and change the blend mode from normal to overlay. As you've seen me use before, I've got a couple of videos in which I use this. I've even made a no time wasted learning dark table about the high pass module. I'll be sure to link it up there so you can check it out. Because look what happens when I move this slider. You will see that the sharpness is decreasing right now and now it's increased, but it kind of looks weird for some reason. So I don't want it to be fully affected. And the same goes for the contrast. I can boost it up quite a bit or I can decrease it, which makes it very soft. And we have to keep in mind that this image has been taken underwater and underwater, everything looks a lot more softer. And my style of editing is editing photos the way as they appear in real life. So that's why I don't want to overdo this. And I want to make sure that it still looks very natural. And now the magic happens and I'm going to show you what I mean. If you look at this histogram right now, these are the waveforms that you see, which you can pick by clicking on this symbol. They will automatically start to appear. You've got several options, but I like this one because now I know here's the red, here's the green, and here's the blue. And when you want to get the perfect white balance, you need to make sure that the blue, green, and red levels are all matched equally. And that will get you the greatest white balance you can ever get in an image without even, you can just look at that waveform, make it like that, and you'll automatically know it's awesome, it's great, it's amazing, and it's the best white balance you've ever seen. So for that, I need the RGB curve module. And I'm going to do something with it. I'm going to change the mode from RGB linked because now everything will be affected. I'm going to change that to RGB independent. And that allows us to change the reds, the greens, and the blues separately. The first step that I want to do is I want to make sure that we get the highlights up a little bit as well as the shadows. But for now, I'm going to pick this point and I'm going to move it inwards. And you see that the red is starting to increase. Now that's a little bit too much. And this is going to be a trial and error because look what happens when I move the green point around. The red shifts as well. So you have to make sure that you keep tweaking them uh, to the best way possible. I'm going to do the same thing for the blues. So I'm going to drop the blues a little bit. And now you see that the color is starting to come back again and it actually looks awesome. In this photo, however, we're shooting underwater. So that means that the blue will be more present than the reds and the greens. 
So in this edit, I'm going to make sure that it still seems as if we're shooting on the water. So let me just increase the blues a little bit. And I want to do the same thing for the greens. Because if we don't, the red and magentas are starting to overtake it. And that doesn't look natural. So just going to increase the greens a little bit. It's not very clear water. So I think this is the best that we can do. But now the image looks a little bit dull and it looks a little bit dark and I want to brighten it up. Here's another thing we can do. I'm just going to put my mouse over here and I'm just going to drag this upwards. And now we've increased the exposure of the image and it looks very, very natural. And from here on, you can edit the skin tone some more. You can isolate them and then either increase the saturation a little bit so that the person stands out or you can decrease the saturation of the background items. It, whatever you want to do with it. This is the way how to fix the white balance of underwater photos. Thank you again, Iki Tamanyari, for sending me this photo. I had a lot of fun trying to edit this photo. If you want to see more of me, please click that playlist over there. And if you haven't subscribed already, you can do so by clicking that button over there. And for this week, there's only one more thing left for me to say, which is make love to the like button. And until next time, doei!